Welcome to Invest Ed. Welcome. Bago tayo mag-invest sa uh, stocks na gusto nating uh, pag-investan, gusto nating alamin muna no kung ano yung or kilalanin muna yung company na gusto nating pasukan. Okay? Kasi kung papasok lang tayo basta-basta sa company na gusto natin, na pinigil lang natin, pero hindi natin alam kung ano yung kanilang strength, ano yung weaknesses, um, ano ba yung nangyayari sa kanya for the years, so yung mga history niya. So yun yung gusto natin alam, inaalam. No? And para magkaroon ng basis and foundation na matiba yung kampanya na pinipili natin. Okay? So ngayon, ito yung ating gagawin. No? So ngayon, ang tatalakay natin ay ang company na RLC. Okay? So, umbesan na natin. So, yung company description ng RLC, no, was incorporated on June 4, 1988, okay, to serve as a, re- a real estate investment arms arm of JJ Summit Holding Incorporated. RLC is engaged in the development and operation of shopping malls and hotels and the development of mixed-use properties, office and residential buildings, as well as the land and residential housing development, the socialized housing, uh, socialized housing projects located in key cities and other urban areas nationwide. RLC's operations are divided by five business divisions such as commercial center, residential, office building, hotel, and resorts, and industrial and integrated development. So, for more information about RLC, so hayaan natin sila mismo uh, ang magsabi sa atin kung anong meron sa kanila. Okay guys, so panoorin muna natin yung kanilang videos. With savvy investors ready to stake their claims in this exciting new frontier. This in turn results to a driving demand for prime properties, attracting good investment returns. So if you want to find the best investment, look no further than Robinson's Land Corporation. Robinson's Land Corporation is the real estate arm of JG Summit Holdings Incorporated, one of the country's biggest conglomerates, composed of various businesses like Cebu Pacific, the country's largest airline, and Universal Robina Corporation, one of the country's biggest consumer foods and beverage producer with stakes in key companies in the country's banking and utility industries. All these are geared towards improving the stature of the Philippines as a business powerhouse, both regionally and globally. Robinson's Land is currently involved in the development and operation of various lifestyle centers, international and homegrown hotels, office buildings, and residential properties across the country. To date, Robinson's Land is one of the country's biggest real estate developers, mall operators, and office landlords, bringing together local communities and transforming the landscape of the Philippine real estate industry. The Philippines poised for major growth and a bright spot in Southeast Asia. You can be sure that Robinson's Land will be at the center of it. The best time to invest is now. We are home. Ang gusto na laman nyo na ano, kung ano ang meron sa R- kay RLC at ano ang... Dumako na tayo sa fundamentals ni RLC, okay? So ngayon, nandito tayo sa Reuters.com, no? So, uh, patignan nyo kanyang net income kung nagpaproduce ba siya over the years ng net income, okay? So ngayon, nandito tayo sa uh, uh, financial and income statement para makitignan yung kanyang net income. So, ito siya, no? So, over the years, nakikita natin nag-grow yung kanyang net income. Okay? From 2015, na uh, meron siyang net income na 5.6 uh, billion. And now, meron siyang 8.6 billion net income. Okay, na yung net income dito, no? Yung nakita natin net income is annually yun, no? Hindi pa masakto, hindi pa sako doon yung COVID, yung times of COVID, no? So, Titignan natin dito sa quarterly data kung ano ang nangyari no, sa kanyang net income ng nagkaroon na ng pandemic. Okay? So, yan. Titignan natin quarterly para malaman natin kung ano ang nangyari at makikita natin net income. So, ngayon, nakita natin, no, yung kanilang pinaka-latest is uh, in the second quarter of 2020. Nakikita natin yung kanilang net income is nasa 
520 million na lang yung kanilang net income. Okay? Compared to the first quarter of 2020 na mayroong uh, 3.1 uh, billion uh, net income. And compare natin yung kanyang uh, second quarter of 2020 to the second quarter of 2019 na mayroong um, 2.1 billion net income, no? Okay. Ngayon, at tatalakay natin, no, kung ano ang nangyari at ano yung mga nakapaloob kung bakit ganito yung baba o oh, sobrang laki ng baba ng net income ni RLC. Okay? First, nandito tayo sa COL Financial, no, para uh, matignan kung ano yung reports uh, na binigay ng, RL, ng RLC, no? Okay? Okay, so ito yung operating income breakdown. So, nakikita natin dito na So, yung nagko-contribute sa kanila ng income ay yung best contributor nila is yung malls nila na meron 47% of income, uh, operating income. And susunod yung kanilang offices na meron 27%. And, okay, so, nandito tayo sa report, no? Nakikita natin dito na in the second quarter of 2020, yung kanilang profit down by 76.1% year to year, no? So, nakikita natin dito second quarter of 2020 meron silang prof meron silang profit na 7 uh, 518 million compared to the uh, the same quarter of 2019 na meron prof na 2.17 billion uh, okay year ago no in 2019 okay so ang sabi dito this impact of the covid uh, 19 pandemic is more evident than it was in second uh, first quarter of 2020 no due to the absence of the impact to, of the change in accounting policy. Uh, quarantine measures imposed for the most part of uh, second quarter of 2020, limited residential, hotel, and mall operations of RLC, leading to a 53.1 decline in consolidated revenue for the first half of the year. Net income was down by 8.1% to uh, 3.68 billion as the impact of the COVID-19. Okay, this is the uh, result summary of the report. No? Nakikita natin dito na uh, yung kanilang revenue breakdown ayan, from second quarter of 2019 compared to the second quarter of 2020 down sila by sub, uh, 53%. Okay? While their net income down by 76.1% compared to the second quarter of 2020 and 2019. The revenue first half of 2019 and first half of 2020 uh, up by 2.7%. Okay? While the net income the first half of 2019 and first half of 2020 down by uh, 8.1%. Okay? So, Another report, no, office segment remain immune to the COVID impact. All businesses of RLC except for the office segments were significantly affected in the second quarter of 2020 by the lockdown protocol imposed by the government. The mall segment saw the biggest impact with the revenue decline by 73.1% as malls were allowed to operate limited capacity forcing RLC to to waive rent of some tenant and, and residential revenue uh, declined by 58% year to year as construction activities were halted and collections of payment was delayed. Okay? This led to lower construction completions and lower unit booking during the quarter. And while the hotel segment saw so revenue declined by due to the lower occupancy rate and lease rates na. No? Okay, so nakikita natin dito kanina no na yung kanilang nag pinaka malaki nang produce ng income sa kanila is yung malls, residentials and hotels no. Nakikita natin na sobrang laki ng epekto sa kanila ng COVID no. Kaya sobrang baba ng kanilang income na produce no. Well, the office segment is talagang um Uh, umahon, no? Umahon yung kanyang office segment. Okay? But, uh, hindi siya kasi mas maliit lang kasi yung contribution niya ng income kaysa doon sa mga nabanggit natin, no? Kaya talaga sobrang laki ng baba ng, ano, ng income ng RLC ngayong quarter, no? So, third quarter of 2020, kung ano yung 
uh, makakabawi na ba? Makakabawi na ba si RLC for this uh, for third quarter of 2020, no? So yun kaabang natin sa report kung mag improve yung kanilang report. Okay, this is the revenue breakdown of RLC, no? So nakikita natin dito yung malls, nakikita natin comparing to the second quarter of 2019 and 2020 down by 73, offices down by uh, up by 19.3, okay? Hotels uh, down by 65%, residential down by 58%, and and ID down by 66%. So, in total, meron silang down in the second quarter ng 53%. Okay? Well, comparing to the first half of 2020 and 2019, nakikita natin na uh, up sila by 2.7%. No? Okay? Okay, so welcome sa market performance ni RLC. No? So, for the past 7 days, nag-return si RLC ng negative uh, 1.2%. While the industries is down by 5.2% and the Philippine market is down by 1.1%. Okay? And for the pa and in the one year of trading ni RLC no, nag down siya, down siya by 41.5% and the industries ay down ng uh, 31.2% while the market is down by 26.6%. Okay? And ito yung P.E. ratio ni RLC. No, nakikita natin dito yung kanyang P.E. ratio is um, maabot ng 9.1 uh, P.E. ratio comparing to the industries na merong 7.4 and market na merong 13.1. Okay? So, RLC is poor value based on its P.E. ratio compared to the Philippine industries na merong uh, 7.4. Okay? Ito naman sa ano, market, no? Uh, RLC is a good value based on its P/E ratio comparing to the market no na mayroong 13.1 okay and this is the price earnings growth ratio ni RLC no or peg ratio so nakikita natin dito na mayroon siyang peg ratio na 0.6 uh, RLC is a good value based on its peg ratio okay na mayroong 0.6 so uh, meaning yan Uh, in terms of peg ratio, it is undervalued, no? In respect to the peg ratio, okay? So, ang gusto kasi natin makita sa peg ratio, one, per, uh, one peg ratio pa baba yung. So, in this case, kanyang peg ratio is 0.6, kaya nasabi natin na uh, undervalued siya in terms of or in respect to price to earnings growth ratio, okay? And in terms naman sa price to book ratio, okay? RLC price to book ratio is in the line with the Philippine industries average no so pareho lang yung kanyang uh, price to book ratio okay ng company and ng industries no na 0.8 and comparing to the market nakikita natin na uh, mas mataas yung market price to book ratio no so kung titingnan natin sa industries magkapareho lang siya so, in terms of future growth ni uh, RLC no nakikita natin dito Uh, in the next one to three years, based on estimates from 13 analysts, no, a uh, 14.1% forecasted annual earnings growth yung um na forecast or na forecast uh, forecasted by the analyst, no. Okay. End of 2020, no, nakita ng uh, mga analyst dito na yung revenue ni um ni ni RLC ay abot ng 34.3 billion per year. And yung kanyang earnings abot ng 8.5 billion per year. No? Okay, so yung mga uh, ma mahahanap natin na uh, future earnings is pwede natin siyang magamit, no? Okay, pa para makompute yung ating intrinsic value, okay? Kasi so this is the analyst future growth forecast, no? So nakita natin dito, uh, yung uh, forecast annual earnings growth. So nakita natin yung company mag-guru by 14.5. Uh, 14.1% while the industries is uh, 26.5% and the market ay aabot ng 26.6%. Okay? And sa forecast annual revenue growth, makik nakikita natin dito na yung kanilang forecasted is nasa 12.8% while the industries is 18.9% and the market is, the Philippine market is 11.7%. Okay? Okay, so in respect to earnings versus savings rate, 
uh, RL, RLC, forecasted earnings growth, is above the savings rate no, na abot lang na 5.1%. Okay? So, sa mga hindi nakakalam savings rate, yung rate of bond natin. No? Okay? So, mas uh, mas malaki siya kaysa sa rate of bond natin. Okay? So, in respect naman sa earnings ng company versus the market, R- RLC earnings are forecasted to grow slower than the Philippine market. Okay? Kasi nakita natin kanina na mayroong uh, earnings lang ang forecasted earnings lang ang RLC ng 14.1% per year while the uh, market forecasted to grow 26.6% per year. No? Okay? And in respect to high growth earnings, R- RLC earnings are forecasted to grow but not significantly. No? Okay? Okay? And in respect also to the revenue versus market, RLC revenue is forecasted to grow faster than the Philippine market. Okay? Kasi nakita natin na uh, yung revenue growth ni RLC forecasted ay 12.8 per year while the Philippine industry forecasted is 11.7 per year. Okay? Kasi in respect to high growth revenue, RLC revenue is forecasted to grow slower than the 20% per year, no? Okay? So, um, we categorize, no? We categorize yung company kapag yung kanya forecasted annual growth is 20% patas, it's considered a high growth revenue na, okay? The future return on equity ni RLC, no? So, nakikita natin dito na meron siyang in the next 3 years forecasted na merong uh, ROE or return on equity na 9.3% while the industries is 8.8%. Okay? So, mataas siya. Okay? Mataas siya kasi sa industries na yung forecasted niya but it is uh, hindi siya umabot sa ating categories na 10% pataas. No? So, kaya nasabi natin RLC return on equity is forecasted to be low in 3 years times no? na meron lang uh, 9.3% forecasted. Okay? Okay, nandito naman tayo ngayon sa past performance ni RLC. No? Kasi okay, so dito, tinitignan natin kung ano yung pinerform niya over the past 5 years. No? Okay, so nakita natin dito, historically, uh, nag-grow si RLC, yung kanyang earnings ng 11.9% okay, over the past 5 years. Okay? And nakikita natin dito yung kanyang revenue. Okay? ay uh, umabot ng 30.9 uh, billion per year. The earnings is 8.35 billion per year and meron siyang profit margin na 27% which is mataas, no? And free cash flow na 16.1 billion per year and cash from operations na merong 16.7 uh, billion per year and operating expense na merong 3.8 uh, billion per year. Okay? Okay, this is the return on equity ni RLC. No? Meron siyang 8.2% uh, return on equity while the industries na kinabibilangan niya ay merong 8.8% uh, uh, return on equity. So, mas mataas yung industries. No? So, uh, nasabi din natin dito kaya nas- nasabi na yung kanyang ROE, RLC return on equity is considered low. Okay? Kasi hindi siya nag sa criteria natin. So, ano ba yung criteria natin? So, dapat mas mataas siya. Mas, uh, mataas siya dito sa ating industries. And, 10% pataas yung kanyang uh, return on equity. Okay? Ito naman yung kanyang return on assets. Na nakita natin dito yung kanyang return on assets ay mayroon siyang 4.6 while the industries is 4.0. Okay? Okay? So, na-outperform niya yung kan- kanyang industries in terms of return on assets, okay? So, ito yung, itong return on assets, ito yung akita uh, niya, okay? Compare sa, mang, sa mga ari-arian niya, no? Okay? Then, po, nakikita natin dito na last year, meron siyang 7.7% per year and uh, 3 years ago, meron din siyang 7.7% per year, okay? Uh, nandito ngayon tayo sa kanyang financial position analysis, okay? So, ngayon tinitignan natin yung kanyang short-term assets na merong um, 72.5 billion while, the kanyang, while yung kanyang short-term liabilities na merong 
uh, billion. Okay? So, para makuha natin yung current ratio, kailangan natin ng current assets. Well, ito yun. And current liabilities, ito yun. No? So, divide lang natin siya. Okay, so, naka, so yung kanyang current assets ngayon is umaabot ng 1.4, no? 1.4 current assets niya. Okay? So, ang ibig sabihin nito, no, na current assets is um, kaya niyang bayaran yung kanyang utang na yung short-term utang niya o short-term liabilities niya ng 1.3. Okay? 1.4 times na kanyang assets or short-term assets, no? Okay? So, yung ibig sabihin pala ng ano, no, ng... Short-term assets and short-term liabilities, no? Short-term assets, ito yung assets na company na kaya i-convert within a year into cash, okay? While the liabilities, ito naman yung um, obligations na company, okay? Na binabayaran niya within a year, okay? So, ito namang long-term assets and long-term liabilities, ito naman yung more than a year, okay? Nakita natin dito, uh, in terms of short-term liabilities, RLC short term assets exceed its short term liabilities okay and uh, RLC short term assets exceeds its short uh, long term liabilities ito na no? okay and now dito tayo sa debt to equity uh, ratio ni RLC nakikita natin dito na mayroon siyang debt to equity ratio na 50.9% okay debt to equity ratio okay so ang ibig sabihin nito ang ibig sabihin lang nito And every 1 peso na ginagamit ni RL RLC sa kanyang operation, 50% ng 1 peso is financed by utang. Okay? So, nakikita natin na um, sa ating standards is 40% pababa lang gusto kasi natin makita sa company. No? Sa kanya kasi tumaas ng 50 na. No? So, medyo matas na sa atin yan. Okay? So, ito nakikita natin yung kanyang history ng kanyang debt to equity ratio over the years. Okay. From from 2015, ay, sorry, from 2013 na mayroong 25.9 percent to uh, until na na mayroon ng 50.9 percent debt to equity ratio. Okay. So in terms of debt level ni RLC, nakikita natin no, na RLC debt to equity ratio is 50 percent. No, it is considered high na. Okay. Kasi nga, sa kapag sinabi ko kanina, no, na 40% na pababa yung gusto natin makita ang debt to equity ratio ng isang company na ina-analyze natin. Okay? Then, sa reducing of debt, um, RLC debt to equity ratio has increased from 40% to 50% over the past 5 years. No? So, nag-i-increase yung kanyang debt to equity ratio. Ako sa in terms naman sa debt coverage ni RLC, nakakita natin na RLC debt is well covered by operation cash, cash flow na merong 32.5%. Okay? In terms naman sa interest coverage, no, RLC interest payment on its debt are well covered by EBIT uh, 10 times uh, coverage. No? Okay? Nakikita natin na kaya niya namang sustain yung kanyang utang. Okay? Okay, this is the balance sheet snapshot of RLC. Okay? Nakikita natin na So, nasa natin yung kanyang utang and yung kanyang mga assets na. Nandito na tayo sa dividend ni RLC, no? So, yung kanyang uh, dividend, yung current dividend yield niya is 3.42%. Okay, kung nakaposition kayo dito kay, ano, no, kay RLC or um, gusto, gusto nyo itong stocks na to, no? So, nag-note na rin tayo dito, no? May note na rin na buy in the next 28 days to receive the upcoming dividend, no? So, para makareceive ka ng dividendo nila, no? So, ang kanilang execution of dividend date is September 28, okay, 2020. And uh, dividend pay date is October 27, 2020. Okay? Okay, this is the dividend yield versus the market. Okay, nakikita natin dito na yung kanyang current dividend yield no, is 3.4%. While the uh, market bottom of 25% is 1.8%. And market top 25% ay nasa 4.8 no and the industries is 1.8 average lang okay so nakikita natin dito uh, RLC dividend is higher than the bottom ito yon 25% dividend payers in the Philippine market okay and uh, RLC dividend is low compared to the 
top 25 dividend payers in the Philippine market. Okay? Okay, and this is the forecasted uh, dividend yield ni uh, RLC in the next 3 years, no? Forecasted in 3 years. Okay? Well, so, ito yung kanyang current payout to shareholders or current uh, payout ratio, okay? Nakikita natin dito na meron siyang 31 point, uh, meron siyang 31%. Okay? So, ano ibig sabihin itong 31%, no? So, ibig sabihin nito, uh, 31% ng earnings ni RLC ay binibigay nila sa dividendo. Okay? So, uh, with its reasonable low payout ratio, RLC dividend payment are well covered by earnings. Okay, so in terms naman sa leadership team ni RL, sinakikita natin dito na yung kanilang president is si Frederick Go. Okay, merong tenure na 2.2 years and merong ownership na 0.063% and nagkakalaga ng 47.7 million. Okay? Okay, so in respect to experience management, no, RLC management team is considered experience. Dahil meron silang 2.3 average tenure, okay? And meron silang average age na 54 years old. And this is the board member of RLC, okay? And nakikita natin yung kanilang tenure and ownership. And in respect to experience board, no? Sa board member, RLC board of directors are, consist are seasoned and experienced, no? So, meron siyang 15.3 years average tenure, no? Kaya nasabi natin na season experience na yung mga kanilang board members or board of directors, okay? Okay, and ito naman yung kanilang ownership breakdown, no? So, nakikita natin dito yung kanyang public companies na merong 61% and general public na merong 29.6% institution na merong own na 9.2% the individual insiders own may un silang 0.2%. Okay? So nakikita natin dito yung kanilang dilution of shares, no? Okay? So in respect to the dilution of shares, shareholders have not been meaningfully diluted in the past year, okay? So meaning ng diluted ay ay kapag nag-i-issue ng new shares or nag-raise ng new shares ang company, okay? Uh, bumababa yung ownership ng mga shareholders, okay? The percentage of ownership ng mga shareholders so this is the top shareholders of RLC okay so nakikita natin dito um si JG JG Summit Holdings Incorporated uh, may ownership silang 60.97% and nagkakahalaga ng 46.3 billion okay and this is the rest of top shareholders of RLC okay so now meron silang number of employees na 2400 employees. Okay? Nakikita natin dito yung forecasted uh, net income or net profit ni RLC ay aabot ng 9 billion. No? So, compared sa nakita natin forecasted ay umaabot lamang siya na uh, 8.5 billion. So, uh, ang kukunin natin net income, forecasted net income ay yung, yung una natin nakuhang forecasted annual net income. No? So, kasi gusto natin maging conservative sa makukuha natin yung intrinsic value ng isang company, okay? O, sa nandito tayo ngayon sa BPI trade, do, para makuha yung kanilang um, mga past data about P.E. ratio, no? So, nakita natin na um, ito yung kanyang P.E. ratio na for the past 5, five years, no? So, ang gagawin natin, um, tukunin natin yung average nitong P.E. ratio niya, okay? Para magamit natin para ma-compute yung future market capitalization ng RLC, okay? Okay guys, so nakuha na natin yung ating average P ratio ni RLC. So ngayon, in the past 5 years, yung kanyang average is 15.87, okay? Okay, now ngayon kukunin na natin yung ating um, future uh, forecasted earnings, no? So nakita natin na pinakamababa is yung una natin nakuha future um, future forecasted earnings, no? Yung nasa 8,500, okay? Yung nasa 8.5 billion, uh, 8.5 billion future uh, net income, okay? While sa CUL, sa CUL kasi umaabot siya ng 
9 billion. So, ang kukunin natin yung pinakamababang future um, uh, net income, no? which is yung 8,539 or 8.5 billion. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin, um, uh, yung ating nakuhang uh, average P ratio, times natin siya doon sa ating forecasted earnings na 8,539. Okay? 8.5 billion to, na? Okay? So, ito yung kanyang future market cap ni RLC, no? So, meron siyang 135.5 market capitalization. Okay? okay? So, ngayon na dito tayo sa writers, no? Para kunin yung capital, uh, current market capitalization ni RLC. Okay? Ito, no? So, yung kanyang market, current market cap is nasa 75.9 billion. Okay? So, gagawin natin para makuha yung ating intrinsic value, no? Kailangan natin i-divide yung kanyang current market capitalization divide sa ating future market cap. Okay? Okay, first kunin muna natin yung ating uh, current market capitalization which is ito. O sa nakuha na natin yung ating uh, current market capitalization. Now, ang gagawin natin divide na natin siya sa ating future market capitalization. Okay guys, so ito na yung sagot. No? Ang gagawin natin uh, i-divide natin yung ating nakuhang sagot sa ating current market price. So, ito, 14.62 para makuha yung ating intrinsic value ni RLC, no? So, sa tandaan natin tong 0.56, okay? So, ngayon, ito ang kanyang intrinsic value, no? So, ito yung intrinsic value ni RLC ngayon, no? Nasa 26.10, okay? Yung kanyang intrinsic value, okay? So, kung iguguhit natin siya dito, no? O kasi nandito yung kanyang intrinsic value ng spagitan nito, no? So, 26.10. Now, yung current price is 14.62, no? Para makuha natin yung margin of safety, kung margin of safety ni RLC. Okay? So, para makuha yon kailangan na natin siya i-times sa 0 0.80, which is um, para makuha yung ating uh, 20% margin of safety, which is 20, no? So, 20.88 ang kanyang margin of safety. Okay, so dito siya no, sa pagitan nito. Okay? So, ngayon, nakita natin no, yung margin of safety is mas mababa yung kanyang uh, current price kaysa sa margin of safety. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nito, in intrinsic value alone, no, sa pag-analyze, uh, uh, it is a buy rating in terms of intrinsic value. Okay? Or in respect to intrinsic value, no? So, nakita na natin, no? Nakita natin yung fundamentals ni RLC and yung kung ano yung future growth ni RLC, dividend niya, and yung kanyang intrinsic value. And nakita na natin kung ano na rin yung kanyang strength and weaknesses. Okay? So, sa pamamagitan ng uh, pag-a-analyze ng ganitong stocks, no? malalaman natin, again, malalaman natin kung ano yung strength and weaknesses ng isang stocks. No? Kasi napaka-importante, bago tayo ulit mag-invest isang stocks, no? titignan muna natin, no? kung ano nangyayari, ano bang nangyayari over the years sa company, okay, kung may nag-improve ba, may expansion bang ginagawa, okay, titignan na tinitignan natin dito, ano, and maganda ba yung fundamentals, wala ba siya masyadong utang, okay, kasi ang nagpapabankarap lang naman talaga, siyempre, ang nagpapabankarap lang naman talaga sa company is yung utang, di ba, oh, kapag masyadong malaking utang, matik yan, Okay, pag malaki yung utang, sobrang laki ng utang, okay, may malaki yung risk na mabankrap yung isang company, no? Pero pag mabababa yung utang at walang utang, at kayang-kaya naman niyang bayaran, is a stable company yan, no? Okay? And again, kung hanggang dito nakaabot ka sa video na to, no? At uh, nandito ka pa rin, nanonood. So, congratulations sa'yo kasi, um... Alam mo na kung paano magkukita intrinsic value. Alam mo na kung paano uh, gawin. No? At uh, sinishare ko sa inyo kung paano ako nag analyze ng isang stocks. Kung paano ako nag-categorize uh, ng isang stocks. And paano ako nag, um, naghahanap ng stocks. No? So, yun lamang guys. Uh, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo na taga-subaybay. No? At uh, still growing yung ating uh, channel. Uh, nasa 1,500 na tayo. No? So, para kailan lang talaga na nasa uh, 10 subscribers lang tayo ngayon. Nasa 1,500 na tayo. So, again, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo guys. And, 
Asahan nyo pa na marami pang videos na kagaya nito ang ipoproduce natin, no? Para magkaroon tayo ng learnings, no? So, asahan nyo na ganito, no? Paulit-ulit yung gagawin natin para mahasa tayo kung paano ginagawa yung analyzation, kung paano ko siya ginagawa para uh, matuto, matuto din kayo, no? Kasi sinishare ko to sa inyo ng libre and kasi gusto ko din makatulong, no? Kasi kagaya nyo rin ako dati na Um, walang mentors. So, sinabi ko dati sa sarili ko na kapag natuto ako, uh, gusto ko rin i-share ko sa iba, no? Nang, syempre na libre, okay? Kasi, okay? Contento naman ako kung anong meron ako ngayon and, and isa sa pinakapinapasasalamat ko kay God na uh, nakabot ako sa dito ngayon, no? Kung ano man meron ako ngayon. So, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo, guys. And as always, guys, invest wisely and see you on the other side. Hello guys, maraming salamat sa panonood. Sana marami kayo natutunan sa video na to. So kung hindi pa kayo nakaka-subscribe, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga videos na parating at marami pa kayo matutunan sa channel na ito. So maraming salamat. This is PSE Warrior saying, trade well, trade strong, and trade smart.